David Harding, Counter Spy, presented by the makers of Old Nick and Bitter Honey Candy Bar. And today we're happy to be able to repeat a special money-saving offer for all you folks who enjoy Old Nick and Better Honey candy bars. We offer a 13-inch stainless steel slicing knife, guaranteed to equal knives selling at 75 cents to $1. Sent to you for only 25 cents in coin, with two wrappers from either Old Nick or Better Honey candy bars. Here's where to send your order. Send to Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. We'll repeat this address later, so have a pencil and paper ready to get the address correct. And listen later for complete details. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter-spy. Harding, counter-spy. Calling Washington. David Harding, Chief, United States Counter-Spies. Especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. And to secure for every American the rights which are his under our Constitution. Honey. Ed, I didn't expect you to come home. Well, I couldn't do any work after you called and told me about Kathy. How is she? The doctor's still with her. Andy, he, he thinks it might be pneumonia. Well, how did she look? Feverish. She was whimpering when the doctor came. You feel so powerless when they're so young. They, they can't tell you what hurts, what's wrong. Yeah, I know. Oh, Andy, she'll be all right, won't she? Of course she will, darling. Now, why don't you rest for a while? You didn't sleep at all last night. Oh, neither did you. Well, let's not argue the point you... Oh, hello, Mr. Gorham. Oh, hello, doctor. Oh, you didn't have to come home from work. Uh, I called him, doctor. I wanted to. The baby's... Well, how is she, doctor? Oh, she's holding her own, Mr. Gorham. Uh, I'd like to order a portable oxygen tent just as a precaution. We'll order whatever you need. It may be a little expensive. Doc, it doesn't matter. I know. I just wanted to keep everything straight. Now, uh, is there another room in the house that we could move her to? Well, sure. Well, what do you want to move her for, Doctor? Well, I'd like a place that isn't quite as damp and drafty. Oh. That's the driest room we have except for the kitchen. Oh, I see. Well, we'll manage all right. This whole place drips water three days after every rain. Really? I thought these houses were just built. They were, but not very well. Oh, well, don't longer, we'll move her to the hospital. Yeah, sure. Say, tell me, doctor, this house has been damp and drafty from almost the first month we moved in. Could living here have caused Kathy's pneumonia? Well, now, I wouldn't like to be pinned down as to the cause, but... Well, I'd certainly say that living here hasn't helped to avoid it. I see. Well, Kathy, Kathy will get better, won't she? Yes, but... But what, doctor? Well, if you can manage it, I think she should get out of this climate for a while... I should suggest the South for a month or two. The South? We Thanks, the... Doctor. We'll take your advice. Andy, we... We'll talk it over, Edie. Well, now, I'll get back to my patient. Andy, we, we can't afford a trip South at this time. You bet we can. Oh, where will the money come from? From this dream house we bought. We're not going to make any more payments on it. We'll use the money to send you and Kathy South for a while. Yes, but... But what about the money we've already put into the house? Well, I'll think of something. Oh, darling, we can't afford to lose all that. Can we afford to lose Kathy? Andy. I'm sorry, honey. I, I shouldn't have said that. I, I just don't want you to worry about anything except her. If we're not going to give Mr. Hobbs any more money, what will we do when we get the mortgage statement? I'm not sure, darling, but that's not your worry. All right, Andy. Now, you start planning for that trip south. The minute the doctor says okay, you and Kathy go. have to get a roommate on the train. We could have gone by day coach. Edie, it's already paid for. Don't fret about it. Enjoy it. All right. Kathy looks good, doesn't she? Oh, I hope she takes the trip all right. Well, she's starting off okay. Sleeping like a log on that seat. Oh, this has been a lot of excitement for a one-year-old. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, darling, I wish you could go with us. So do I. 
Somebody has to work. Uh, what are you doing about the mortgage payments, Andy? Well, I've been talking to some of our neighbors in the development, and they've been stuck just like we have. Uh -huh. Together, we may work something out. Oh, don't get into any trouble, Andy. I won't, darling. But don't you worry about it. Just have a good time. Well, now I'd be get, better get off this train or I'll be going with you. Goodbye, Andy. Goodbye, darling. Mr. Bradley, Andy Gorham. Yes. Can you come over to my place tonight about 8 o'clock? Yeah, that's right. See what we can do about these salt boxes that were sold to us as houses. Good. I'll expect you. Harold, Andy. 8 tonight okay for you? Yeah, yeah, my place. Right. Be seeing you. Tommy, Andy. We're going to meet here tonight. Count on you? Good. 8 o'clock. Bye. Some of us here paid a little more for our houses than the rest of us. A larger house or more land. But whatever you paid, I think we're all agreed that it was too much for what we got. No well, question about was. that. Now, our individual complaints are pretty similar. Green wood, flooded cellars, crumbling foundations, poor flashings, bad drainage. Well, you know them as well as I do. Perhaps better, Andy. Perhaps. Yeah. But the point is, the majority of them can be repaired. At whose expense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't want to sink any, any more money into my house. You won't have to, Tommy. At least, I hope not. And who will, Mr. Gorham? If we all stick together, Mr. Brandley, I think we can make the Oak Nub Real Estate Company bear the expense. What? You've been drinking, Andy? <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's an ice cream. Yeah, but that's all it is. <laughs> Mr. Hobbs of the Real Estate Company has only one interest in these houses now. It's not repairing them. It's collecting on the mortgages. Right, Tommy. And that's our weapon. We refuse to pay those mortgages. What? Until steps are taken to remedy our complaints. What about foreclosure? Well, that is a possibility, Mr. Bradley, and we should face it. But if we all stick together, I doubt that Mr. Hobbs will foreclose on 45 houses at once. It would certainly be bad publicity if he did. Sure. Whether or not that will bother him, I don't know. But not getting his money will. Can we get in trouble, though? Yeah. Well, to be honest, I'm not sure. I think we should get legal advice and keep the whole affair above board. Well, how'd you go about it, Mr. Gorham? Well, I believe we should draw up a statement of what we intend to do and why. And then send copies of it to the government housing authorities, the Veterans Administration, and any other federal and state agencies concerned. Just to get ourselves on the record. It's a good idea. Very right. sound. Now, after that, we pool our monthly mortgage statements and appoint one man to present them to Mr. Hobbs. To tell him that they won't be paid until our homes are made habitable and worth the purchase price agreed on. Now, that's the whole idea. Now, how do you feel about it? Well, it, it's certainly better than just putting up with paying for these cracker boxes. I'll go along with it. I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Bradley. Count me in. And I'll make the first motion of this informal association that Andy Gorham be the man we appoint to talk to Mr. Clifford Hobbs. Huh? All right, all right, I will. And I'll do my best to get more out of him than just conversation. Candace Fire Headquarters. Yes, Mr. Secretary, I'll connect you. Candace Fire Headquarters. Busy. Hold on, please. Yes, Mr. Harding. Mr. Peters, please. Mr. Peters, thank you. Peters, you come into my office for a minute, Peters. Okay, Chief. And bring a copy of that memorandum from the Veterans Administration. Which one? That letter from the XGIs who are refusing to honor their mortgage statements. Oh, yes. Be right in, Chief. What do you think about it, Peter? Well, from the way they describe their houses, Chief, I sympathize with them, but I don't see that there's anything we can do. Oh, we could conduct an investigation. Of what? There's no visible cause for criminal proceedings. As I know, still two agencies have already called asking us to investigate. Oh? The Federal Housing Administration and the National Association of Home Builders. Association of Home Builders? That's a private builder's outfit, isn't it? Yes, reputable builders in all large cities. Well, what's their interest in this? Well, a story like this is bound to get publicity. The public will read that publicity, and they'll cast all contractors and home builders in the same role as this Oak Nub Realty Company. They won't differentiate. So the National Association wants to get on record as opposing these practices. That's it. And the FHA? They don't think any outfit that can stir up as much resentment as this company did could be completely legitimate. Then we do investigate. I think we should, Peters. I want you to assign two agents to check the company's incorporation papers and any other related documents of public record. Right, Chief. Also get train reservations for us to Asheville. 
We'll question this man who signed this letter for the veterans, this Andrew Gorham. Back to our old Nick, David Harding, Counter Spy case in a moment. Now, I want to tell you folks how you can get one of the most useful knives you've ever had in your home at a fraction of the price you'd expect to pay. It's a handy, helpful slicing knife nearly 13 inches long with a blade of gleaming lifetime stainless steel. And notice this especially. The blade is hollow ground. Now, if you know knives, you know that hollow grinding makes for a longer-lasting, keener edge. And you know it's a process which is usually found only in knives costing $2 or more. Yet, you can get this knife for only 25 cents with two wrappers from either Old Nick or Bit of Honey candy bars. Yes, to get your stainless steel slicing knife, just send 25 cents in coin with two Old Nick or Bit of Honey wrappers to Old Nick... Box 144, New York 8, New York. Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. We can make this offer only because we have a special arrangement with a famous cutlery manufacturer. He is the only one in the country who has this new secret process by which long-lasting stainless steel can be successfully hollow ground. We guarantee that this stainless steel slicing knife would compare favorably with knives costing 75 cents to $1, even without the special process hollow grinding. But hollow grinding gives this knife longer life, a keener edge, and greater usefulness. So when you send in, you're really getting extra value, an outstanding bargain buy. But remember the address, Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. For each stainless steel slicing knife you want, send us two wrappers from either Old Nick or Bit of Honey candy bars and 25 cents in coin. The offer may be withdrawn at any time because the supply is limited. So be sure of your quick-cut slicing knife. Send your order today. Now, back to our Old Nick, David Harding, Counterspy case. <laughs> Let's drop the act, Mr. Hobbs. You know perfectly well that not a single one of us is satisfied with this house. I hope you didn't come in here just to argue. No, Mr. Hobbs, I didn't. I came in to give you these. Here. What are they? A mortgage statement you mailed out a few days ago. All 45 of them. What? And until you do something about the condition of the Oak Nub house homes, that's all you're going to get every month. Your statement's back again. I'm not sure I understand. It's simple enough, Mr. Hobbs. You either take care of the complaints we made about the houses, or we refuse to pay for them. You can't do that. I'll foreclose on you. If you'd like to make 45 foreclosures with the publicity that would result, go ahead. I'll take you to court. That may do some good. We'll find out in court. Now, look here, Gorham. Isn't there some way we can get together on this thing? Yes. How? Start repairs on the houses. All 45 of them. Now, look. I can't spend the company's money on my own say-so. I've got investors and stockholders to think of. And we've got families to think of. We paid for decent places to live, and we want them. Now, why don't you be sensible about this, Gorham? Just what do you consider sensible? Well, you made a lot of complaints about your house. Suppose, uh, suppose I take care of those complaints. And the other houses in the development? Forget them. Worry about yourself. Well, that's an attractive offer. I know a smart man when I see one. Thanks. And I assure you I'm smart enough to know why you're making this offer. What do you mean? You're not impressed by me. You're impressed by the fact that I'm representing all of the homes you hold mortgages on. Well, I intend to keep it that way, since our only strength is in sticking together. Now, Gorham, don't be a fool. I'll make my offer, offer even more attractive if you listen to a deal. Mr. Hobbs, the only deal I'll make will involve all 45 homeowners. When you're ready to talk one like that, call me up. Until then, you can whistle for your money. Goodbye. Not a bad-looking house on the surface, Chief. Take a closer look, Peter. Some of those clapboards up there are warped. Oh, I didn't notice. Yes? Mr. Andrew Gorham? Oh, that's right. My name is David Harding. This is Mr. Harry Peters. How do you do? Oh, what can I do for you? Our credentials. From the United States Counter Spies. Oh. Oh, come in. Thank you. I imagine you know why we're here. Yes, I think so. Well, won't you sit down? Or isn't that the customary procedure before an arrest? Arrest? Oh, 
I think you've got us wrong, Mr. Gorham. We're here just to ask questions. Oh, well, go right ahead. We want to stay within the law. Well, Mr. Gorham, what do you expect to gain by this? Decent homes and good repair. You weren't forced into buying this house, were you? No, I know, Mr. Harding. Caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. But in a tight market like housing, I think the seller should have some responsibility for what he sells. You've got a point there. When did you notice defects beginning to show up in your homes, Mr. Gorham? Four or five months after they were built. You notified the building company? Yes, but they didn't pay any attention until we all got together. Oh, you're getting results then? Well, not exactly results, but we've made Mr. Hobbs of the Oak Nub Company rather unhappy. I should imagine he would be. He offered to fix up my house and possibly throw in a little money if I'd forget the whole affair. Just your house, not the others? That's right. Sounds a little off-key, doesn't it, Chief? Yeah, I thought so, too. If it were only faulty construction, Hobbs could take the case to civil court and make some kind of an adjustment that would be fair all around. Yes, if he's an honest man. Well, I know of nothing that could prove he isn't. Well, I don't think a man who's on the level would have tried to buy you off. I agree, Mr. Peters. Mr. Gorham, what did you pay for this house? $10,500. Are all the houses in the development the same price? No, they run from nine five to twelve five. I see. Well, I'd like to run tests of the structural defects in a few of these homes, have a responsible builder look them over. Do you think that would be all right with your neighbors? I'm sure it would, Mr. Harding. We'll agree to anything to get some action. You set that up, will you, Peters? Right, Chief. And, Mr. Gorham... If Mr. Hobbs should get in touch with you with another personal offer, let me know. All right, Mr. Harding. I can't guarantee results, but I can guarantee you that we'll make a thorough investigation of this whole affair. Hello, Bernie. Oh, Hobbs. Mr. Mankato up yet? Yeah, he's having breakfast in bed. Well, I have to see him right away. He won't like that. Neither do I, but there's a little trouble. Trouble? I thought this setup was strictly legitimate. Well, things go wrong. And we put them right. And I hope you can. What is it, Barney? Who was it? Hobbs, he wants to see you. I'm sorry to disturb you at this time, Mr. Mankato. Okay, you did. Now, what's on your mind? You got a simple job? There ought to be no problems. I'm afraid there are, though. What's so hard about collecting the mortgages I hold? Simply, they won't pay. What? They're beginning to get wise to the fact that they were stuck with those houses. I'll shed a tear for them. They bought them, they'll pay for them. Strictly legitimate. You want the case to get to court? They ain't gonna get there. They're gonna pay. Not according to Andy Gorham. Who's he? One of the men who bought a house. He's representing them all. Troublemaker, huh? Well, he's not easy to get along with. We'll see about that. Barney. Yeah. I advise you to be cautious, Mr. Mankato. Keep your advice. All my dough is tied up in those houses. Money I got the hard way. Rum running in the 20s, policies in the 30s. Black markets during the war. Gonna keep it the hard way if I have to. Well, times have changed, Mr. Mankato. People have different ideas nowadays. Nothing changes. People are the same. They only wear different clothes. You push them around, they do like you say. I push. Yeah? Gorham won't be easy. I tried to buy him off. He wouldn't sell. One of those guys, eh? Barney knows how to handle them. He'll still have the others to deal with. Don't be a jerk. Barney, you were with me in that poultry racket in the Bronx. Yeah. What happens when you chop a chicken's head off? He kicks a little and he dies. Get the idea, Hobbs? Uh, don't be too hasty about this, Mr. Mankato. Who's being hasty? Barney picks this guy up. We try to reason with him. If he don't reason, it's his tough luck that he's the head of the chicken. The part that gets chopped off. Well, that fills in the picture with more to... Right. Goodbye. Hello, Chief. I've got something real interesting for you. I've got something more than interesting. Criminal. What? I've been over to the local FHA office getting information via teletype from their Washington headquarters. You can pin something on the realty company? A false statement in their building application to the government. They said those homes they built wouldn't sell for more than $7,500. That's how they got their application approved. I'm not surprised. Why? What have you got? Chief, do you know who holds 90% of the company? Who? Mr. Christopher Mankato. Chris Mankato, the racketeer who said he was going to retire? That's the one. 
Only he doesn't seem to have kept his promise. No, at the prices he sold those houses, his profit's 200%. That's a racket in anybody's language. We'll close in fast, Peter. So far, the company hasn't any idea that we're investigating. We should be able to attach all their files and records for criminal and civil prosecution. What do we go for? Mankato or Hobbs? Oh, first Hobbs. He signed the building application. He'll lead us to Mankato. What about Andy Gorham, Chief? Ask him to come down here. Start him on a full statement of the whole affair. I'll pay a little visit to Mr. Hobbs. Mr. Harding, I had no idea your organization would be involved in this. It's a very unfortunate situation. I'm sure it is. Oh, I can see the viewpoint of Mr. Gorham and the rest of the homeowners, but well, I have my stockholders to look out for. And who are they? Why, various people. I can't name them all offhand. You go to great lengths to show your stockholders a profit, don't you, Mr. Hobbs? What do you mean? I have a copy of a building application you made to the government. Oh. You said those houses would sell for $7,500. You charged more than that. Why? A false statement is a serious offense, Mr. Hobbs. A prison sentence goes with it. Well, I don't... Never mind. I'll uh, take that. Just sit where you are. Hello? Open up, Realty Company. Oh, yes, Peter. Oh, Chief. What is it? I can't locate Gorham. What? He left his office to go to lunch. He didn't come back and he hasn't gone home. I don't like it, Chief. Particularly since Mankato's involved. We'll find out if he's got anything to do with Gorham's disappearance soon enough. Come over here right away. You've got Hobbs there? I have. And I'll give you odds that he tells me everything we want to know before you arrive, including where Mankato is. Won't you, Mr. Hobbs? Oh, you're being silly, kid. You ought to listen to reason. Well, what's your interest in this? Don't be curious. Just be smart. Say the word and you go out of here with a new house and a couple of bucks. Well, suppose I did. You think the rest of the fellas would pay off and take it lying down? I'll worry about that. You take away the head, you take away the power. See the deal? No. Okay, Barney. Yeah, sure. <coughs> Jake, kid, Barney's hand can hold out longer than your face. Yeah? Well, you won't get away with this. The original, kid. Everybody says that. One last time. Is it a deal? No. Too bad. But in a way, it's good. You saved me some dough. Looks like you do a real job, Barney. Okay. Here or someplace else? Someplace else. I don't like funerals. All right. What do you mean? You're not going to knock you off? Yeah, kid. Your object lesson number one. Nobody likes to die, and they might think twice about kicking up a fuss with you as an example. Let's can the chatter, Chris, and get it over with, huh? Your department, Barney. Yeah. Open up, Mantello. Open up. Somebody crossed this boss. Stay hey. hey, where you are. Oh, Mr. Hardy. Untie him, Peter. Right, Chief. Hardy, he caught us first, huh? That's right, Mankato. Easy, Barney. I wouldn't like to shoot you. All right, Andy. Well, a little bit worse for the wear. I'm glad you came, and that's an understatement. All right, Peters, put cuffs on Mankato and Barney. Okay, nobody's going to make trouble. I got lawyers. You'll need them. What happened, Gorham? Now, that gorilla Barney picked me up. I didn't know what it was all about. Mankato is the man behind the Oak Nub Real Estate Company. That's his interest. Yeah, and by rights, I should be suing this guy. He's the one who's not paying off. I just wanted to save the courts a lot of trouble. That's nice of you, Mankato, but I'm sure they'll find it no trouble at all to convict you of false statements and fraud. Take them away, Peters. <laughs> Mr. Harding will be back in a moment with a special guest. You know, friends, I want to be sure that every Counterspy listener has a chance to get one of our outstanding stainless steel slicing knives. So if the lady of the house isn't listening now, be sure you tell her about this offer. Or better still, send in for one for her. Remember, this is an extra useful slicing knife, guaranteed to compare with knives costing 75 cents to one dollar. Because of a new secret process, we've been able to have this knife hollow ground, a feature usually found only in knives costing $2 or more. But this slicing knife is offered to you today for only a quarter with two wrappers from Old Nick or Bitter Honey candy bars. Our slicing knife has a blade that is gleaming stainless steel, hollow ground with a razor-sharp edge, hollow ground by a special exclusive process. 
to keep its sharpness for a long, long time. The handle is polished blonde hardwood designed to fit your hands smoothly and comfortably with a non-slip grip. You'll be proud to use it as a carving knife at your nicest dinner party. And your stainless steel slicing knife will stand up for years of hardest kitchenware. It's stronger, it's extra sharp, it's extra useful. You may want two of these fine knives, so here's what to do. For each stainless steel slicing knife you want, send in two Old Nick or Bit of Honey wrappers with 25 cents. Please use coin. Do not use stamps or checks. Send to Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. Send your order now while you're st still thinking about it. The quantity is limited, so send in today. <laughs> This is David Harding. Now we're happy to present the Executive Vice President of the National Association of Home Builders, Mr. Frank W. Cordright. The moral of tonight's episode is an important one. Don't buy a new home without knowing everything about it. Unfortunately, some fly-by-night operators, like the ones you've just heard dramatized, have tried to capitalize on the immense housing demand. In order to drive these unscrupulous people out of the home building business, we must have the help of the home buying public. Your part of the job is to be sure you're buying good value and quality. Be sure that the home is well constructed and well situated, that it is properly priced and financed, and that it is being built and sold by a reputable builder. These are all easy things to learn before buying a house, things that one generally makes very sure of before buying many less expensive things. Remember this. Home building requires skill, integrity, and years of experience. We came out of the war with a most serious housing shortage. But by this time, we are approaching the two million mark and are beginning to meet the most critical part of the veterans' housing needs. Speaking for the National Association of Home Builders, I can assure you that its many thousands of members will continue to build good houses at fair prices. Thank you, Mr. Cordright. in next Sunday, same time, same station, for the case of the photogenic crook whose gang dealt in hot money until the counter spies worked out a scheme to put their activities on ice. The case of the camera-happy crook on David Harding, Counter Spy. <laughs> Tonight's David Harding Counterspy case was directed by William M. Sweets and was dramatized by Palmer Thompson, with music by Jesse Crawford and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer. David Harding Counterspy is a Phillips H. Lord production originating in New York for the makers of Old Nick and Bitter Honey candy bars. Now, a listening reminder. When Drew Pearson looks ahead, he usually comes out with a fascinating prediction. Be sure to hear Pearson tonight over this ABC station. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.